had them in the first time, but why not do it a second time, huh? Come on. Come on. We got the heifers in this pen. They're gonna be in here while they're calving for the next month. I think we got about a 45 day period of calving with these girls. We moved a lot of snow in here. We got a nice pile and the sun's been getting at it the last few days, really drying it out. It's gonna be a nice place to calve if we uh, don't get them in the barn. Well, gets the blood pumping in the morning, but we got her done. Hey, uh, we got calving coming soon, and it's not the greatest timing because the uh, National Cattlemen Beast Association Farm Show in Orlando is in two days and Dad and I are gonna be going to it. So we have a neighbor and Uncle Jeff that are gonna be running the farm for a couple days, you know, hopefully not in calves, but the good news is the weather is gonna be well above average. It's gonna be in the 40s, so we're gonna have what we think will be closest to calves up in the barn, but if something does calve outside, it should be just fine because it's so warm out here, but we'll be back before the due date, but you know, something could always calve early, so we'll see what happens. about 30 head that we're gonna run through here quick after we work them we're gonna run them over to the north farm and I'm gonna try to remember to put a bale in there before it gets muddier right now things are a little frozen so we're trying to get a lot of this work done well it's not mud yet it's what you call the they call that the poor man's concrete or the cowboy concrete <laughs> So before we leave, we're gonna bring all those heifers up that we put in that next closer pen, and we're gonna sort them, look at anything with a big bag, you know, it's starting to milk, it's gonna be calving soon. And we're gonna have it so they're outside during the day in this pen, and in the barn at night so they can calve on something uh, clean and warm. Dad's just grabbing a bale and we'll throw one in the Guardian round bale feeder. I think we need to get the planter hooked up. 
I think I need to pick my glove up off the floor. Instead of planter. Okay. Yeah. It feels like April out here. Everything's melting. Dad's in a sweatshirt. Hard of, hard of winter. You know how when people uh, taste test wine, they say it's got a mouth feel to it? This stank's got a little mouth feel to it. When you're pushing and breathing through your mouth, it's got a mouth feel. Feels like poo in the mouth. And then when it splashes up in your mouth, then it's got a mouth taste to it. Training like I'm having a hard time pat making a bowel movement. If you know what I mean. Get a hernia from pushing too hard on the bowel movement. It's got an alfalfa Slash. aroma. Yeah, yeah, it is. Fermented beets. <laughs> Before we went to scrape that out, I grabbed my, you know, my mucky boots. These are dry shots, and I always uh, make sure to dump them out. And it proved to be a good idea today because look at all this dog food that dumped out of my boots. You think it was Ellie or a mouse? But I don't know how a mouse would reach that far up, throw it in, and then still get out of the boot because I've had a mouse die in a boot before. That's a lot of trips. But I have a question. Uh -huh. You know, when you decided that there was dog food in your boots, why would you dump it on my concrete? Right I didn't here? know there was any in there until I started dumping. There's like 10,000 of them. That's a lot of trip, mouthful, mouse trips. Yeah, it's going to take you equally as long to pick them back up. I think I'll let the mice in the outside world Maybe pick Ellie, them up. Maybe Ellie, get on it. Get to it. Well, there's, Ellie made a deposit in here if you want to pick that up instead. I'll give you the option, you do one, I'll do the other. I don't live here. You want to clean my garage? He says as he's coming in the house to eat. <laughs> what do you got in that fridge? <laughs> Trying to make it so everything goes smooth while we're gone. You know, and bearing doesn't go out because it's greased. Got both the tractors filled with fuel. I even shot back the floor of the tractor just to make it a little more pleasant for when they're running our equipment. In a bit, we'll get those bread heifers up. We'll eat, look at each one, see which ones have bigger bags and are getting closer to calving. We kind of assume we'll get back, there won't be any calves, and we just got the barn dirty for nothing, but it's, you know, peace of mind and doing our due diligence. Yeah, I, I think it was last video. I put three quarts of oil in this thing. It's it's burning. And in the last couple days I've been hearing a whoop, strange noise, feeling a little bit of like a vibration on the steering wheel. Coming here, we got some sort of fluid. Pull the dipstick on the power steering reservoir. Not a drop on, well, maybe, maybe a drop on the end of that. Good gracious. The old 98's trying to die on me, I think. But we'll bandage her up. Just need to find some power steering fluid. One old jug, partially used. There it is. We'll add that to the collection of different fluids that this truck periodically needs. That's definitely just a bandage, not a fix, because we got a, we definitely got a leak. There's moisture and it's spraying around. So we'll have to get that into the shop.
I think we got seven sorted off. They'll be up here and in the barn at night, eating on that bale during the day. We're probably still seven to 10 days out before the first calf, but playing it safe. You just turned it on. Take two. Song of the day. Take the, two. Take two, the first time it was off, but I thought it was on. Now my phone's ringing. It's by Looking Glass. It's called Brandy, and it's the song of the day. Take two. Last thing we want to do before we leave for a couple days, uh, we're going to feed the cows over at my place. Even though, you know, it's warm enough, they're back out grazing and they have been for a week or so. It'll give us a little peace of mind knowing they got plenty of feed, but also that they're not too far away from calving either. Right when we get back from Orlando, we're going to move these, bring them home, and get ready for calving. We don't want them getting skinny. I want to have plenty of feed. They're also out in the pasture and they're pooping all over and there's not much to graze out there. I don't really like that, you know. If they spend too much time in one of these areas, they can maybe kill the grass because the ground is thawed. They're tracking it up. about hurricane skinny jeepers it's a beach ball on wheels right there it's looking like april there's water flowing wearing a sweatshirt outside it's actually february kind of weird and it's going to be a shock when we hit negative 10 again which we probably will before the real spring comes well when we see you back next time we'll be bringing these cows home chasing them all up trucking them back to uh Corn stalks at home will they hang out before they start calving about a month, month and a half from now. But thanks for watching everybody. Love to see you next time. Have a good one. A little bit about our trip to Orlando. Here is a bug crawling on the floor, which is what I spent a lot of time doing because we had terrible flight conditions, just delays and delays. But we finally got there. First stop, lunch. We spent a lot of time with uh, our friends. Here is Rod Spooth, uh, Pride of the Farm. Thank you to Artsway uh, for bringing us down there. We had a great time with them. Did some meet and greets. Here's Rod again. They were playing our videos in the background. Um, just a lot of different products here. Uh, this was one of Dad's favorites. You can kind of see why. <laughs> now, of course, stopping by the John Deere booth. Love that John Deere green. And Dad got to meet someone that uh, he's watched online quite a bit here. So I'm very fortunate to meet Corbett Wall, and I wanted to tell you that every morning I start my day watching you and kind of getting me an idea of what your thoughts are on our cattle industry and it's something that's really near and dear to me. And I'm very happy to meet you. Well, I'm glad that's just your son here today and not your wife because the wives are not as happy with my morning broadcast as the, as the husbands are and they said they normally say i hear your voice coming from underneath the bathroom door and uh 
but, yeah. they, but they get tired of it. <laughs> yeah, and we, we've always got it on full blare. Oh yeah, you, you got know, it turned all the way it, up. And, yeah. and it echoes too. Absolutely. Yeah. We we happen to have a mutual friend in Jared Herman that recently bought the Mitchell Sail Barn in the Absolutely. last year, and I just wanted to tell you I really appreciate what you do and keep doing it because you're you're, you know, I know you don't get a lot of comments on on that, but I see the views and I. You're really making a difference in the cattle industry. And I appreciate that. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, you bet. Show sure went fast. Tear down began pretty quickly. A uh, lot to see there. And it definitely takes a couple days to get through it all. Look at me and my brand new Hyundai. There was an event at the end. People could go to Universal Studios, uh, put on by Caterpillar. Um, and then uh, the next day... Flight was delayed. We had a tough time. At one point, both my pockets were full of tickets that were no longer uh, viable delays and such. But we did make it home, and we had a great time. Thank you to Artsway.